the problem with our current view application is that anybody can just go right here and add new posts. You're currently not seeing posts because the API server is not running, but anybody can just go right here and add a post. We of course don't want that. So what we want to do in this episode is we want to allow everybody to read the posts, but only authenticated users will be able to add new posts. And we are going to do that using loopback's ACL functions. So to say to loopback, okay, let everybody read the posts, but just allow authenticated users to add new posts. Uh, you would go to your uh, loopback directory where your API is and just do lbacl. Now it's going to ask you for which model do you want to apply those rules and it's going to be a post, uh, all methods and properties, okay. Uh, we want to write and we were gonna say any unauthenticated user explicitly deny access. So we want to deny access for every unauthenticated user that wants to write to our database, we want to deny access to them. So explicitly deny access. And that's it. Now we set this up. As you can see, it was super easy. The only thing we need to do now is to tell view uh, to act accordingly. And also I will show you how this authentication actually works. Okay, so I'm going to start my server now. So once this is started, we can go to Explorer, right? Uh, we can go to post and let's try to add a post. So we just click here, string, string is okay, never mind, try it out. And as you can see, we get error code with authorization required message. Okay, so we can't add new posts, but the way we could add new posts is if we go to user, and then first of all, we have to create a user. Uh, I'm just going to create it from a loopback explorer, uh, but you can also create it uh, through view if you want. So let me just see, so users, uh, users post. Okay, we are looking for this. And now we want to add new user. So to do that, uh, I'm just going to delete everything right here. And instead of uh, actually for email, I'm going to put john at doe.com. And instead of email verified, I'm going to put a password of Of course, if you're doing this through view or something else, you would not create password as clear text, but you would have to encrypt it in somehow and then send it to the server. And let's just try this out. So as you can see, the response code is 200, uh, email is added, so John Doe is, uh, John Doe is added, and the ID of that user is two, because I already created one user before. Okay, so, we still can't actually add nothing here. If I refresh the page and try to post a post. So click right here, try it out. We are still getting this message. This is because we still haven't logged in our user. So to log in a user, you just uh, find a login route. So users login, and then you just send password and uh, email. So. Okay, so email is john at doe.com and the password is john123. Try it out. Okay, so I think I forgot a colon right here. So change this, try this out again. And as you can see now we get the response code 200 which is of course okay. And now uh, you get this ID right here. So that ID is access token. So if I copy that ID, paste it right here, set access token. And now if I go to post, posts, and we wanna post the posts, uh, we get string string, so string out, just 
so we know that this post was authenticated. Let's try this out. And response code is 200 and we added a new post with authentication. So without this token, you can't add anything, but if you have the token, you can add uh, your post. Now we want to do the same thing, but with view. If we want to add something from our application right now, we do this add post. And of course we are going to get 401 unauthorized because we still have an R we still haven't authorized our user. So to authorize him, we of course first need to log him in. And uh, to log someone in, you would need a few pieces of information, which we are going to set up right here. So the first one is going to be email. And the second one is going to be password. And of course, you seen before, we also would need a token. So we set this up. Okay, great. Now, uh, let's just copy this card from here, paste it down here, uh, remove those IDs because they can be a problem for us. And I'm just going to copy this and paste it instead of text area and uh, enter email, enter password, also, this is going to be an email field and this is going to be a password field. And the model is going to be, of course, email and the model for password is password. Okay, and uh, the method for sending all of this is going to be called login. So login method. login and we create it down here. Okay, so we created the login method, save this, uh, refresh the page, we are not getting any errors. This of course still doesn't work, but it will work uh, very shortly. So first of all, uh, we wanna set up our data just like we did for when posting posts. So this is going to be credentials. So we set up our credentials, it's going to be an object, it's going to receive an email, which is going to be this email, and the password, which is going to be this password. Now we need to post these credentials to A login endpoint. So I'm just going to paste this in. So localhost API users login. So we want to log in, log in, log them in there. And then we just pass in credentials. Then we just want to get a response from the server. Right. And we can just say console log response. Okay, so let's see what are we going to get with this. So if I save this, go right here and do something like test at test.com and some random password and click login, we will get unauthorized, of course. But let's see if we do something like John at do.com and right here, John123, login. And now as you can see, we get a response and we get that ID that we want. So this is it, right? So we need to set up that X token. And to do that, I'm just going to do this dot token is equal to response data ID. So that's the name of our token. And now we are able to set that token up. Now this still isn't going to work uh, because we need to send that token when creating a post. So to do that, uh, we need to uh, change a little bit our 
add post method. So if we go right here, add post. So we are sending to API posts. And now I'm going to set up some URL variables. And that variable is going to be access token, which is going to be this dot token, right? So we are setting up this access token right here. So access token equals to this token that we just set up. And now we should be able to add new posts uh, to our uh, API. So if I save this, go right here and let me just refresh this so that we get a clear console. Uh, so log in, we logged in successfully and let's now try to add our post. Add post and as you can see, uh, the post is added right here. We can do another one. Add post and it works. But the problem with this is, if I refresh the page and try to add something, as you can see, we are still getting 401 unauthorized. So that's not good for us. And now I'm going to explain how you can uh, save that access token into your local storage. And then you don't have to log in every time you want to add a new post or every time you refresh the page. So what we want to do is we just want to go down here. And when we get this token, we want to save it to our local storage. Uh, it, local storage is something similar to cookies but for JavaScript. So I'm just going to do local storage. Local storage set item. Set item and our item is going to be called ACC token. And the value of that token is going to be this dot token. Okay. And now, uh, what we want to do is we want to read that token every time the <clears throat> view starts up and to read it, I'm just going to go to where we set up our data and just do a local storage again, but this time we are getting the item. So get item and the item that we are getting is called ACC token. So the first time you refresh the page while you're not logged in, uh, this is going to be empty, of course, and you won't be able to add anything. But once you log in, this is going to be saved to local storage. And every time you re refresh the page, that saved information is still going to be available to you. And it's going to be set up right here as a token. So you don't have to log in again. So if I save this right now, uh, go right here. Let me just refresh the page. Login. Okay, so the login is passed successfully. Let's try to add something. Okay, add post. It works. Now let's try to refresh the page. So our access token should be saved. And we can actually just check out it right here. So local storage. And as you can see, ACC token is right here. Okay, so if I do, after refreshing the page, this once more, add post, as you can see, I can still add those posts. So what else you can do with this is you can go to the logout route, and in that way, you can log out a user, but don't forget when doing that to also delete your local storage. So you don't want that X token to be in there once the user is logged out. Okay, so this has been it for this video and for this series. I will not be continuing it. Uh, because I planned this to just be an introduction to loopback, but I will probably have a paid course uh, that will cover loopback and view in much more detail. So stay tuned for that. I will, of course, uh, get any information out on this channel first and then probably on social media. But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you like the content I put out, subscribe to my channel. Also, uh, if you want to ask me questions, you can do that via the social media.
And if you want to send some money my way, you can use the Patreon page for that. And a big thank you to all my patrons right now. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next episode.